Hey, welcome to episode 18 of The Brink of Sanity. I am Jay, and of course with me is Bri. Hello. And back for the second week in a row is our very special guest, Empty Chair. How are you our doing, fav- Empty Chair? Our favorite guest, Empty Chair. Nice to always have you back. You were always welcome here. Mm-hmm. It uh, worked out so well last week, we figured, uh, why not have Empty Chair back? Hopefully this week we won't take a pee break and fuck up and have to make two shows out of it. Yeah, well, one show this week. That's the goal. So, uh, uh, speaking of that, um, some people who are subscribed through iTunes said they only got part B. Uh, last week we had an A and B part of the episode uh, due to the technical difficulties. Um, so if you only got part B, uh, part A actually does exist. You just have to manually hit download, apparently. So, uh, I think I got both of them, but I don't remember. Yeah, I got an email saying, oh, that sucks about part A. And I was like, well, it doesn't because it's still there. You just go to the website and get it anyway. Yeah, you can go to the website too. It's up there. Uh, BrinkasanityShow.com. Uh, apparently, still not on Podcast Alley. They haven't updated our thing in five weeks. So, uh, oh, well. yeah. But, uh, you know, thank you everyone who voted. We got a bunch of votes in the first two days in a month. Did we? So, yeah, yeah. But I then ev- everyone probably saw that we were high up and then looked at our site and then saw that it showed no episodes since April and uh, quit again. But probably. it's just not true. So hopefully that will get taken care of. Uh, and uh, that was our technical difficulties for the week. But yes, sir. We always have to have some kind of technical difficulty. Oh, it wouldn't be our show if we uh, didn't have catastrophes on a weekly basis. <laughs> but uh, I should be getting a new computer sometime this month, and that should cut down on the catastrophes. No promise on Podcast Alley because that's out of my control. But everything else should be fine. Speaking of catastrophes, how did you do a poker on Friday night? We had a seven-person tournament, and everyone had the option to buy back once. Mm-hmm. Uh, I made it to the final two, and I, the guy in first probably had twice as many chips as me. Yeah. And um, he said he would give me you know whatever second place is plus twenty dollars if I just stopped right there. There you go. So I figured instead of you know wasting hours battling back and forth, I'll. Take the money and run. So uh, I ended up uh, with a seventy dollar pot. There you go. Not bad. Yeah, not too bad. Uh, you know, I twenty dollar buy in came out with seventy. I could deal with that. Yeah, very nice. The uh, reason I ask you that is for the people who don't know is that uh, we came as close as we've ever been to having a drunk show on Friday, and what ha- what prevented us from having a drunk show was Jay playing poker because I. Uh, I went out and I got tanked, and I got home. <laughs> uh, it's, a, it's a funny story. Let me let me back up a little bit. Um, now, I live alone, and I have this rule that I don't drink alone. Uh, only doing the podcast, but I don't consider that alone because I'm talking to you at least. Yeah, so, we're like, I have this, virtually like, in the same room. Like, I have a bar full of liquor, and I have a fridge full of beer, but I just feel like a loser if I get drunk at home or whatever. But I have no problem going to this Chinese restaurant that I go to all the time and get scorpion bowls alone. I go there alone all the time, and, you know, I'd rather go there alone than with people. And it never fails that if I go there looking for, like, if I say, you know, I'm going to spend, like, a couple hours here and have a couple of drinks, it never fails that I'm the only one there. When it's like, I just want to stop in, suck down a drink real quick, and get out of there it never fails that there's like people there, mostly girls. And, uh, it happened to me last Friday. I had a miserable end of the week last week because our office, uh, moved. So I spent Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday packing boxes, moving boxes, moving furniture, driving back and forth from the offices. It was just a nightmare. So, so Friday comes and I'm like, I want to just go have a scorpion bowl. I just need to get, you know, get a nice big drink in me. So I hadn't showered. I was all sweaty from work, whatever. And I was like, screw it. I, so I go down there and I get there, and there's this couple that I always see on Fridays when I go, and I hadn't seen them in a long time because I haven't been there because I just haven't gone out there. And so I talked, and and the woman is kind of hot in a weird way, so I like flirting with her, even though you know she's with the guy, whatever, and he hates me. He's always like giving me dirty looks and like not laughing at my jokes and all that. But so they were there when I walked in, so I was like, cool, this will be fun. 
<laughs> but they got up and left like five minutes after I was after I got there. She wanted to stay for another drink, but he was like, "No, we gotta go. I'm tired." So they get out of there. So I'm like, "All right, fine. That's the excitement of my night." <laughs> so I'm sitting there, and like ten minutes later, these two girls come in. This uh, uh, an Asian woman and a and a white girl. They were both, you know, medium, medium cute, whatever. So you know, they sit down on the other side of the bar. So we start. To, I start talking to them. And then this couple comes in, and, and they were kind of weird, but they were talking to us, and it was like this big conversation going on. Then the couple leaves, and he's – so then it's just me and the two girls, so I'm talking to them, and like, you know, whatever, just bullshit. And then I finished my drink, so I had to get another one, and I ran out of money. <laughs> and then these two guys come in, these shady-looking guys, and they totally cock-blocked me, and it was so funny. These two women were married, and they like – like everything was like, oh, my husband this, my husband that, her husband this, her husband that. And I was like, oh, whatever. But these two guys come in, and this guy was so cheesy. Like, this one girl was saying something, and he was just like, oh, you're married? Oh, you're, your husband's a lucky guy. And I was like, fuck you. You just walked in. You don't even know. Like, Oh, that's a great line. <laughs> you know, like, you, you just you don't even know these people. You're like, oh, a lucky guy. And I'm just He's, like, got that written on the back of his hand. This, this will be killer tonight. <laughs> you know, and then, like, they're saying something, and they asked him if he was seeing – he like tried to give out his business. He was like a painting contractor, and he was like, "Yeah, I own my own business." Yeah, great. So he gives him he gives him a card, and the, the girls are actually they had a good sense of humor. So they they're looking at the card, and they go, "What's this, Vivian?" And they like made up a phone number. They're like, "What's this, your booty call? Uh, you might want this card back." And he's like, "What? What are you talking about? There's there's nothing on this card." And he got like all like paranoid. Nice. I thought it was pretty funny. And then he was like, "Oh yeah, you know." I always, I can never find the right girl. I just want to find the right girl. And I was like, oh, just give me a fucking break. And I'm getting drunk. And I'm trying to, like, chime into the conversation. And, like, the two guys are just, like, completely ignoring the fact that I'm even in the room. Mm-hmm. And so finally I was like, all right. So I got up and I left. So I'm driving home. And <laughs> I shouldn't have been driving. I was just like, I had the windows down. I was, like, screaming out the window at cars. And I was like, all right, time for a drunk podcast. Jay, I, Like, in my head, I'm like, Jay's going to be home waiting for me because he knows I'm drunk. So we're going to do a drunk show. <laughs> and I get home, and I you're not online, so I text you. And and uh, you're, like, playing poker. So I'm like, fuck, well, I could either pass out, and it was only, like, 930, or I could just keep drinking to keep it going just in case. So I cracked open the wine that I had in my fridge that I started drinking during last week's show. And I pounded probably like three quarters of a bottle of wine while I was sitting here. And eventually I just forgot all about the show. And like I started texting random people and people started calling me. And I, next thing I know, it was like two in the morning. And I was like, I got to go to bed. I'm fucking drunk. Nice. <laughs> yeah, I'm in the middle of the tournament. I just get a text like, let's do a drunken show now. Let's do one right now. <laughs> like, you got to chill out, buddy. <laughs> So I was having a, a bad streak the last couple of tournaments we had, so I figured, you know, if I get bumped out in the first five minutes like I have been, we'll do one. But uh, I actually, uh, I was up from, like, the second hand on, and uh, it, was, it was going well the whole night. So I was giving you uh, updates every time somebody got bumped out. Yeah. But I think I personally took out, like, five out of the seven people. It was pretty cool. I remember writing you something like, I don't care about the show, just win it. Because that was the point where I was like, I lost interest in doing it. Yeah, so yeah. I was like, all right, whatever. Yeah, that's when I stopped giving you updates because I figured you were probably, like, passed out. or. <laughs> I was hung over the next day, though. That was fun. That, or that was that part was rough, but that was a fun night. It was just one of those nights that never fails. Like, I want to just get out of there. And then... Because the girls ate, so they gave them fortune cookies, and the guy gave me one. And my fortune said something like, flattery will get you somewhere tonight. <laughs> and so I showed the girls that. They're, like, reading their fortune. I go, you're not going to believe mine. And I was like, it says, flattery will get you somewhere tonight. And they're like, oh, yeah, no, really, what's it say? And I'm like, no, here, I showed it to them. And they're like, oh, it looks like you better stick around. I was like, yeah, I think I better. <laughs> nice. It was, uh, it, was a cra- it was a wacky night. I haven't had a night like that in a while, but. It was fun, but we ended up not having the drunk podcast. So, maybe what next about time. this Friday? Uh, I don't know. I think it has to be one of those spontaneous things. I don't think it could be planned. I think we should actually tell people about it. Yeah. So, like, we're not just drunk on a podcast uh, with nobody <laughs> watching. <laughs> that's kind of creepy, too. Well, that's true. Well, this I don't know. Friday, I don't know. I'll have to. I'll let you know tomorrow. Okay. 
Because I, I got the night totally open right now, so I'm game. Okay, cool. Uh, I've decided not to go to anybody's apartment for about two months. Why? Well, one of my buddies, uh, I don't know how far the news gets, um, you know, <laughs> Manhattan news and stuff, but there was a crane that fell on an apartment. Oh, yeah, I heard about that. That was an apartment across the hall from one of my buddy's apartments. <laughs> So uh, he couldn't go back to his apartment. He had, like, pets in there, and he couldn't get to them. And it was just a complete wow. mess. And uh, so now he's, like, he's staying in a hotel. He can't even go back. Um, and, you know, it was, like, it landed, like, literally across the hall from his apartment. So, you know, like, 20 feet closer, and he would have, like, crushed everything. Yeah. Uh, and then there was a murder in uh, another building Friday night and that was my other friend's apartment building. Huh. Uh, well, our uh, our guest host, Randy, actually. Oh, really? So, yeah, we're having her on next week. So, uh, Is that why she's not on tonight? Because she was either the murder victim or the murder uh, suspect? Well, she wasn't the victim. Uh, I don't know. She might be the suspect, though. She mm. uh, She has been suspiciously quiet this week. She is a woman, so that makes her volatile and irrational. Right. I mean, she could have been uh, on her period, and who knows what happens after that, you know? Some guy called her fat, and that's the end of him. So, yeah. um, you know, we'll, we'll get the other side of the story from her next week. But, yeah, I figured between cranes falling and murders, um, I'm just going to lay low and stay in the apartment. Are you in, like, a wind tunnel? Uh, is that loud? I, I, it just... Are you outside? No, I uh, I opened the windows because it was really hot in here. But uh, it's like I think there's a storm about to happen, so I think it's really windy. Yeah, uh, I could kind of hear wind a little bit. Okay, well, say something for a minute, and I will shut the windows. Something for a minute. Right. So that's nobody I know had any uh, home emergencies uh, that I know of, anyway. I haven't talked to many people that I know in the past week. Okay, that should be better. Okay. Was it just I don't like silence, or were you? Don't ever, don't ever make me ad lib again. <laughs> <laughs> you could have said the email address or something. Oh yeah, I could have. I remember. What, next was it time. just creepy, awkward silence? Or... No, I talked. Okay. So it wasn't too bad. I sort of trailed off a little. Mm-hmm. I'm Did gonna. You... Con... What? Go for it. Go for it. Well, I was just gonna announce that I'm probably gonna be a little distracted uh, during the show because I've got the uh, hockey game on. But ha. that's all. Hockey is still going. Oh, yeah. Game six of the Stanley Cup. The Red Wings were 20 seconds away from winning the Cup on Mon- on uh, Monday night. They are winning by one third period 20 seconds ago. They're up three games to one. The Penguins scored a nice goal 20 seconds ago. And then in triple overtime, at quarter to one in the morning, the Penguins won. So now they're back in Pittsburgh, down 3-2. Pittsburgh is probably going to win tonight, and then game seven will be on Saturday. They're down 3-2, but they're probably going to win? They're probably going to win tonight, yeah, because they're home and they got a lot of momentum because they fucked them up last week, or uh, last game. Gotcha. I know nothing about hockey. But I know less about baseball. When you and Billy were talking about baseball a couple weeks ago, I was like, totally. Who's going to win the NBA Finals? Since I know nothing about basketball. I am rooting for the Celtics, but I think it's going to be the Lakers. I'm hoping for a multiple plane crash and both teams perish in flames, but I know that's kind of a dire uh, outcome. What are the Vegas odds on something like that? I don't know. Might be worth putting a five spot on. At least, yeah. Uh, oh, last episode, we got an email about last episode. I was, I sounded like I was half asleep and had no energy, apparently. And uh, I just wanted to say that is because I was half asleep and I had no energy. So, huh. uh, I was yeah. drunk. I didn't even notice. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I let you talk like for the first 15 minutes of the episode. Last week was one of our weaker shows. We just read a stupid magazine. Oh yeah. And I meant to tell you, I, I was going to post this on the message board. I forgot. I thought of a very, uh, actually I thought of two, but now I can't think of the other one. I, I thought of a comic that they left off. He could have been in like the older, uh, that category of like old guys, mm-hmm. Don Rickles. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know where he is on that list, but 
Yeah, no, he's good. I, I actually saw him live once. He was, he was it, really good. Yeah, I'd like to see him. Um, yeah, so yeah, last week was like, you know, you can't, be, you can't be on all the time. And, uh, yeah. you know, it wasn't awful, but it wasn't. No. It wasn't like the Joel shows. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Joel. <laughs> I keep telling him he should come back and like, you know. Not have, smoke pot during the show? Well, maybe, you know. <laughs> have like a decent episode. And, you know, we suck too. I, I, it wasn't just him. We were. Yeah. We didn't know what. Nobody knew what the hell we were doing. We just kind of. used him as a scapegoat, but we were all responsible for it. Oh, yeah. We turned on the mics and just froze. So it was, uh, it was pretty rough. Um, that's why I pulled those from iTunes. You can still get them on the forums, but don't. I mm-hmm. put them up there as like an option if you're like really bored, but don't accept that option. You shouldn't be allowed to download those until you reach a certain point. Like you know, we have the uh, the criteria for uh, all like the for different every... rankings in the forum. Right, right. Yeah, you shouldn't be able to get that together. You're like at least intolerable. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we have uh, different ranks in the forum by how much you post, and you know, you go from a creep to intolerable to you know, it's uh, tolerable. Yeah, you, there's some good ones too. It's, you know, it's just the first couple where you you just think. Yeah, uh, we, we change got... them randomly too. At least I have. Yeah, <laughs> probably like stealth goes in and like changes <laughs> people's ranks. Yep. So uh, that's uh, brinkofsanityshow.com dot com slash forum. Uh, they are. You are able to post on those, so don't be shy. Yep. Uh, you know, just go and sign up, and then you can post. And the message boards have died down a little bit lately. They have. It's you know, kind of depressing. Mm. I thought it was going to be like the snowball effect, but uh, it's like the snowball going uphill effect. <laughs> the snowball melting. Yeah, the snowball in the desert effect. Uh, so that's no good. But I'll just blame it all on Podcast Alley right now. Yeah, or Joel, one or the other. Yeah, it's something. Neither of those. I'll find something else to blame it on next week. <laughs> Obviously not on us. We're you know flawless right now. Oh hey, I saw Iron Man last week, and I have a couple questions about it for you. Shoot about, about Iron Man. First of oh, all, I liked first... it. Okay, you liked it. Good. Yes. Uh, I, it was a bootleg copy, so it was a little dark. Uh, because oh. it was a camcorder apparently. Nice. Did you have uh, people, like, standing up in the front rows and stuff? No, you could see, like, a little head in front every now and then. But other than that, it was, uh, I liked it a lot. I thought it was a little bit, now I know that they're making a second one, and I can't imagine that they made that movie not expecting to make more, because it was, like, an hour and a half of buildup, and then, like, a ten-minute fight, and then it was over. Well, there was also a tease. Um, I don't know if you noticed at the end, there was a second suit, and, uh... You know the uh, I, f- I forgot the guy's name, uh, the black guy. He like looked at the suit and he said, "Not oh, this yeah. time." Uh, oh, yeah. That's actually a character called War Machine. Okay. Which looks kind of like Iron Man. It's another like type of suit he made, and somebody else controls it. So I have a question about Iron Man. How old is the comic Iron Man? You're lucky. I'm a complete video game nerd. Um, well, I, I knew you would know the answer. That's why I was waiting to to talk about this. And by video game, I meant comic book because uh, right, yeah. uh, the Rolling Rock's kicking in right now. Same thing. Same thing. They're both for losers, so you know, same thing. <laughs> uh, Iron Man didn't have his own comic until like I believe the late '60s, but he was in I think Tales of Suspense <clears throat> in the mm-hmm. er- real early '60s, and then the Avengers in 1963. Now let me ask you this: mm-hmm. Is Iron Man, uh, what's his uh, his alter ego? Tony Stark. Tony Stark is Tony Stark, um, loosely based on anybody. And I'll tell you. What I don't I'm know going. if it was somebody from the '60s. I mean, I know they made him look exactly like he did in the comic. He he had the uh, you know the pedophile mustache, and he was he was a millionaire playboy. Because as I was watching it, the thing that i just kept thinking when i was listening to him uh, i mean i couldn't really see it all that well but he just seemed like he was based on howard hughes a rich guy who liked to like make a lot of crazy inventions was sort of erratic with who's howard hughes own thing howard hughes well you probably only know him as the crazy guy that lived in this hotel in the dark for 20 years 
But he was like a when he was younger. Did you see the Aviator? Um, no, I didn't. Oh, he was this guy that um he was like uh, he has such a long story about him, but like he was this kid that his dad invented this drill bit that like reinvented oil drilling and then his dad died and then his mo- or his mom died and then his dad died. So he was like 17 and he inherited, inherited all this money from his dad's company and he bought out his entire family so that he could own the company and he ended up making like millions and millions of dollars then he went to Hollywood and he he had a production uh, studio and he made movies and he pushed the envelopes with all of his movies and then he became an aviator and he designed planes and he was just he was like an eccentric billionaire and he always had these crazy ideas he was designing planes and he was making movies and like doing all these things and then he, in his later years, like, he crashed a bunch of times, so he started getting, like, brain damage, and he got addicted to opium and stuff, but then he went crazy, and, like, he went to Las Vegas, and he lived in a dark room of a hotel, and they tried to kick him out, so he bought the hotel, he kicked everybody else out, and he bought, like, ten other hotels in Vegas, and he was, like, a hermit, and sort of nobody really saw him for the last, like, 20 years of his life, but he was basically, like, rich and eccentric and sort of a scatterbrain the way Tony Stark was and that he was always like doing one thing and thinking about the next thing. So I'm wondering if when was he around? Um like the thirties and forties. Okay. Well it could have been then. Yeah. I mean that's the first thing I thought of like well just the way Robert Downey was acting him out. I was like it reminds me of like early Howard Hughes. So I'll have to look into that. Yeah, yeah. Uh did you stay for after the credits? No, the credits got cut out on the uh on the Oh, okay. Page. Okay, yeah, there was a, there was a brief thing after the credits and it's uh it's a tie into a movie that's going to come out next year that's between Iron Man 2 and now. Uh, oh, okay. They they're going to make an Avengers movie. Okay. And, uh and for those of you who aren't comic book nerds, which is probably everyone who listens to this show, it's a team of superheroes that has Iron Man, the Hulk, uh, Thor, uh, Ant Man, and probably Captain America. So okay. they're probably going to make. I, I don't know which character. I mean, the team changes like every other month, but mm-hmm. that's probably the people they're going to use for the movie. Uh, I heard in the Hulk movie the same scene happens. So I know I read that they're making a Thor movie. Oh well, yeah, they're probably going to use the same ending scene at the end of all those movies because some. Uh, I don't know. I guess spoiler alert. For anybody who hasn't seen it, uh, 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 this guy uh, comes in and says, I want to talk to you about the Avengers Initiative. And that's it. That's the entire scene. It's uh, oh, okay. it's um, Nick Fury is the character. And for some reason, even though it's a white guy, Samuel Jackson has to play it because I think it's in his contract to be in every single movie. <laughs> I think so, yeah. So for some reason, he's Nick Fury, and he says that. So I heard he does the same thing for the Hulk, and he'll probably do it for Thor. They'll probably squeeze in a Captain America movie. I was really impressed with Iron Man. I was, uh, I mean, I don't know anything about it, but I thought it was good. Robert Downey Jr. is just a very, he's a very underrated actor, and he's quirky just the way he is, and he kind of brings that to all of his characters, which was nice. Yeah, plus it was the perfect role for him. I mean, a millionaire alcoholic playboy. I mean, that's him. So, yeah, he's awesome. Oh, yeah, and Howard Hughes also slept with, if you name any famous woman between 1930 and 19. 60 he nailed her okay so yeah I, could have been. I have a, a couple of biographies about him and, and one there's a like five page just listing at the end of the book of the women he was uh either with or rumored to be with and it's just like anybody you can imagine wow yeah he got all of them and that was before all the uh crazy diseases going around yeah interesting oh and mm-hmm. the the suit he made in the beginning was the suit from the very first episode um, uh, in, you know, of Avengers. That was his suit. Mm. Uh, I just looked it up. Uh, it was Tales of Suspense, uh, but that was also in 63. So uh, 63 was Iron Man's first appearance. Okay. Uh, and it was nice seeing the dude back in movies. Yeah, I can't say the dude is a bad guy. I kept thinking, why does the dude want to hurt Iron Man? I was like, why isn't he drinking White Russians right now? <laughs> uh, did you see Kiss Kiss Bang Bang? No. What's that? 
I've heard of it. I've never seen it, though. That is a great movie. It's Robert Downey Jr. and another guy I think is kind of underrated, Val Kilmer. And, uh, yeah, I would definitely suggest Netflixing that one. That one was really good. When I get Netflix, I'll put it on my list. So I just wikipedia Tony Stark. Yeah. Uh, Lee Stanley based this Playboy's personality on Howard Hughes. Oh, all right. He said Howard Hughes was one of the most colorful men of our time. He was an inventor, adventurer, multi-billionaire, ladies' man, and a nutcase. Mm-hmm. There you go. That was uh, exactly what you wow. were saying. You are a super genius. Maybe I should read more comic books. They're good stuff. <laughs> so that was a. Uh, well, I never even I knew about Howard Hughes. So you know you know about all the real life stuff, and I know about all the fictional stuff. So between the two of us, we can pretty much piece it all together. <laughs> yeah, it all some somehow it always blends together. <laughs> all right, so uh, hopefully nobody got mad at the uh, two second spoiler. It wasn't even like a it was literally like a thirty second scene. So you know, get over it. Speaking of spoilers, you know what I I really hate about what our society has become, and I hate almost everything our society has become. I hate, like, everything's a spoiler now. Like, you can't go on the internet without, like, somebody being like, like, oh, look, I was, uh, you know, if you go to, like, Perez Hilton or any of those sites, and there, there's always, like, pictures from, like, a movie. Like, I, I remember a couple months ago, like, I mean, I would never see this movie, I could care less, but it would piss me off if I was a fan. They were, like, they were, like, pictures from the sets of, like, Sex in the City, and they were, like, talking about the plot, and it's, like, what happened to, like, I go to the movie theater, I see a preview, and then two months later the movie comes out, I know nothing about it, I see it, and I like it. Why do I have to know the entire movie before I go in? Oh, it's so true. I don't like knowing anything about stuff when I'm going into it. Mm. I like just picking up a And a they did that, like, with the... Indiana Jones, too. They were like, oh, yeah, here's the plot, and this is what this scene was, and... Yeah, people like to know everything about it when coming into it. I, I really... I don't want to know anything. Even with, with like uh with like with comics, they, you know, they say the plot like 3 months in advance and there's, you know, people getting holds of pages and posting them and it's like you know, when it comes out, you'll find out what happens. Like settle down. The only time that's ever worked and it actually it was technically it kind of backfired is when the last Sopranos was the week bef- the week build up to the last Sopranos episode. The only reason that mo- the last episode of that show had any sort of, uh, like, was any good on any level was that there was so much disinformation out there that it made every scene so intense. Because I remember hearing it was like rumors that you know, Tony was going to do- die. Tony was going to die. Paulie was going to kill Tony. Uh, Meadow was going to get into a car accident and die. AJ was going to kill Tony. Somebody was going to kill AJ. Um, in like all like everything imaginable, so you're watching it, and you know you're like, oh, Polly and Tony are seen. This is gonna be the war. this is where Polly's gonna kill Tony. Then nothing happens, and Meadow's driving. Oh, this is where Meadow's gonna get into a car. Her car's gonna blow up. Then nothing happens. So it sort of made the build up to every scene, and then at the end when nothing happened, you were like, what the fuck? So if you watch that, if you were like not born now, and in 20 years you go and watch that episode, you're gonna be like, what the fuck? What's the big deal? But that weak buildup where everybody everybody knew somebody who knew what was going to happen, and everybody was dead wrong, which was great. Right, right. I think a lot of it was people were guessing, and they wanted to be the like the guy who like posted what was what happened. So they were just yeah. like taking shots in the dark, hoping to be that guy, so they can get their five minutes of internet fame. Which is another thing I really don't understand. Like, so you posted something, you know. I don't know. I, I don't get the whole internet thing. I really don't. But I don't know. I, I feel like I missed the boat on that stuff like by about two years. Yeah. I remember I had a funny theory about what the, how that show was going to end, but I can't remember what it was now. It was something like completely like wacky. I had. I figured somebody was going to. I thought Tony was going to die, but uh, I didn't think the ending was that bad. I remember, like, people were like, oh, Furio is coming back from Italy to kill Tony. Like, eh, no, he's not. That they didn't even leak. leave on, like, that Adriana is going to come back. You no, know, that would have leaked because somebody would have known that she was on the set. 
I forgot what my theory was, though. It was a good one. Were you that pissed off at the ending? No, I didn't mind it. I mean, when it first happened, I was like, what the fuck? I did the whole, I thought my TV died on me. But then I was like, oh, I get it. It's pretty... Well, I thought it was kind of cool because I knew how pissed off everyone was going to get. Yeah. And, you know, really, like, I, I really feel like, you know, the whole family wasn't going to just cease to exist. So to, like, try and close the whole thing was, yeah. you know, can't really do that. So, I mean, even if Tony died, everyone's going to be wondering what happened to the family after he died who's going to take over and shit. So, like... No matter what you did, there wasn't going to be like a solid ending anyway. So yeah, you know, I thought it was fine. Of course, I also thought the Seinfeld ending was really cool too. So. Oh, I love the Seinfeld ending. So uh, I, I don't see how else the show could have ended. I thought it was pretty pretty neat. But I thought uh, Curb should have ended uh, the way it ended in season five, where he died. Yeah, and, yeah, or just <laughs> like. Well, I hated that ending, but I also hated the fact that they, like, ignored it the next Yeah, season. it was kind of weird. I liked that he ran off with the blacks, though. Like, as much as I want that show to come back, it would be a funny ending if that was uh, happened there. Although now I hear it's coming back again, so... Oh, really? Yeah. I don't know. I think that show's starting to jump the shark pretty hard. Yeah, it's either really good or really bad. And there was yeah. a couple really good episodes this past season. Yeah, I feel like there was a couple, but... The amount of really good episodes is getting less each season. It's kind of like a Family Guy. There's like a diamond in the rough, but when it's bad, it's like really, really bad. You hear they're making a Cleveland spinoff show? Yeah. That's going to last like two episodes. Oh, that's going to be like the worst thing ever. Cleveland's great for like a line here and a line there. Like I love the character, but to support an entire show, I mean... Especially, uh, what happened to Cleveland Jr.? They haven't showed him since the first season. I know. He was awesome. No, he was around the first three seasons, but he disappeared. The the first run, I mean, the first run of the show. Right. Since he came back, I don't think he's been on. No, no, they just kind of forgot about him. They forgot about Joe. He's like like one of those uh, characters that goes upstairs and never comes back. Yeah. Joe's son's been gone, too. Mm. Yet they'll use the uh, 1930s weightlifter guys every single episode and the, uh, the vaudeville piano guys every episode. I don't know what they're doing. Yeah, I don't even watch that show anymore. I think I'm done with it. I think I'm done. With it. Uh, I don't know if you've seen Always Sunny in Philadelphia. No, I, I've heard of it though, but I haven't seen it. I just saw it for the first time this weekend, and it was friggin' hilarious. Uh, I took out the the first season DVD. Mm-hmm. I, I watched the whole disc like twice over. It was brilliant. It's not on anymore, is it? Uh. The fourth season is starting in the fall. Mm. So it'll be coming back. They took like a really Show- long break. Showtime finally started rerunning. Uh, that wasn't offsides. Fuck you. Showtime finally started uh, rerunning Californication now. Ah, uh, brilliant show. I caught a few episodes of that last week. I was very excited to see it back. I'm assuming that show is not going to be as good when it comes back. Just based on the way this season ended. That was a bad ending, but I have to assume they only made that ending because they didn't know the show was coming back. Right. Probably thought it'd be a one and done, but... Who knows? So this weekend, uh, have you ever seen that movie, The King of Kong? The King of Kong? No. The documentary about the guy who broke the world record in Donkey Kong. It's actually really good. Um, but that inspired me to break some world records in video games. So I'm going to break five video game world records this weekend. And I will post on the forums my, uh, my world records on the official site. What games? I'm going to go for old school Nintendo games. All right. I figure the competition isn't as high for those. Uh, I'm going to break a bunch of records in uh, an Olympics game, Gold Medal Challenge. Uh, I will also be breaking the world record in Dr. Mario. And hopefully the Tangan versus Tetris. That's the big test right there. I told you how some girl thought she could kick my ass in Tetris and I fucked her up, right? Yeah, yeah. That, we talked about that last week. and yeah. uh, I did the same thing with Miss Pac-Man. 
Uh, I don't know why these people think they can take on the champs. Actually, I got an email uh, from somebody, from a listener, who after that's right after last week's show, who uh, challenged me to Tetris. Really? Yeah. So I don't know what's wrong with these delusional women. They just think that they can beat a man at a man's job. Yeah, that's you know it's not going to happen. And if you think you could beat Bry, uh, I don't know. Don't even try me because I could stomp Bry in Tetris. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> Let the trash talking begin. Don't make Next... me have to come to New York now. That's my goal. I'm just gonna keep trash. <laughs> you come up and uh, show what you got. So I got a question for you and for the listeners. All right. Um, you know, uh, I guess either call into our voicemail or post on the forums or email us uh, with your responses. Uh, brinkofsanityshow.com. You can find uh, our emails in the voicemail or you can just go to the forums there. Uh, what do you do if your friend is dating somebody who's crazy and you don't like them? Now, when you say what do you do, do you mean what do I do or what does a normal person do? Let's go with both. I want Because I want to hear your side story. Because <laughs> I would tell him that your girlfriend's crazy and a lunatic and she's a bitch. Okay. Or your and, boyfriend or whoever it is. And assuming that you want to have a little bit out? more tact. No, assuming you want to have <laughs> a little bit more tact than that, uh, yeah. then what do you do? Um, well, that's where the listeners are going to have to chime in on this one. <laughs> You're like, I'm out of ideas. <laughs> Tact, I'm not sure what that is. All right, well, I want to know what to do, because I have about four friends who are dating crazy people. And it's not a situation where you can hang out with them without the crazy person. So, you know, I don't mind if they're dating somebody I hate if, like, you can be like, all right, let's just us go out tonight. Mm -hmm. But uh, that's not the case in some of these scenarios. So, well, how crazy are they on a scale of... Well, um, crazy to the point where I don't want to really be associated with them. Mm -hmm. uh, crazy to the point where um, I think less of my friends for putting up with it. Are these long term girlfriends or short they're in if it was if it was a short term thing it wouldn't be an issue but I like these I, are people they've been with forever for a I, while? I feel like these people are in for the long haul. Hmm. And uh since none of my friends actually listen to this podcast, this is a good thing. But um <laughs> if they do, uh I don't know. Might I'm be not talking about you, just say that. I'm not talking about you. It's the, my other friend with the insane bitch of a girlfriend. So, what do you do? What do you do? Help me out, folks. It's not a good situation. Um, Jay doesn't have the stomach to just flat out say, hey, that was a goal. Oh, no, it wasn't. Jay doesn't have the stomach to flat out say, uh, your girlfriend's a psycho cunt. Well, I mean, like, what am I supposed to say? Like... You know, your girlfriend's a psycho bitch, I hate her, and I think you have no balls for putting up with all the shit that she makes you do. There you go. I guess I could do that, but... I you need know. evidence, cite examples. Yeah, I, I feel like a lot of these people are in denial, though. Like, I really don't think... I really don't think, like, if I said, hey, this person did this, this, and this, and... You just, like, looked at it like it was normal. I, I feel like they'd be like, yeah, well, what's the problem? It, it's to the point where I think their minds have been clouded. And I'm not being unreasonable here. It's like I, I'm not just, like, being overly critical because I have uh, a friend who's married and a friend who just got engaged. And I think their girlfriend slash wife is awesome. You know, I, I actually like when they hang out because, you know, it's fun. Uh, but these other people, you know. Do I know any of these people? You do, yeah, yeah. Not uh, not all of them, because there there are multiple offenders in this. But uh, some you know, some you don't. So it's uh, and don't say names because uh, oh, I won't. You know, I wouldn't uh, even know who to name. 
So yeah, I don't know. It's uh, I don't know what the deal. It's I mean, I guess I could just not hang out anymore, but that's kind of a dick move too. I don't know. Help me out, folks. This is a little homework. Well, it's, for you. well, what's the is the issue that they're always around the other person? Is that? Yeah, it's like, hey, you want to come out? And they'd be like, yeah, me and so so and so will be over in an hour. You know, let me call Allison. We'll be right over. Yeah, yeah. There's uh, no Allison. I just made that name up for anybody listening. Right. At least there isn't Allison, but it's purely coincidence. Uh, yeah. So it's like that. It's like, yeah, but I, you know, I kind of invited you, and then, uh, you know. Just say no, not her. If I got into more details, it would give the person away. But, mm-hmm. um, you know, I'll I'll answer any uh, further questions through email or maybe even the forums. I don't really actually. One of these people from out of town. Uh, maybe, maybe, yeah. Ah, uh, I see. Could be, could be. So it's a come down and hold on. Let me bring someone else. It's yeah, good. or you know. Uh, or if not, then there's, you know, I'm on the phone with them the whole time instead, you know. Uh-huh, I see. Um, you know, we're supposed to be, like, having fun, and, you know, now it's, like, phone drama, and, you know, that's no good. Mm. So, I, I, don't, I don't know what the solution is. I really don't. I think I know who you're talking about. <laughs> I'm sure you do, but uh, there's a couple other offenders, and they might even be worse offenders. Actually, one of them is worse worse of an offender than the person you know. So The person I'm thinking of, I'd, well, I've never met this person's other significant other, but I never knew that she had the potential to be crazy. But <laughs> knowing this person, it wouldn't surprise me. So Complete maniac. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I don't know. Let me, let me know what you guys think of that. Yeah, help Jay out. He needs help. I do need help. And, you know, if the only answer is to, uh, you know, stay in my room and read more comics and play more video games, I'm not opposed to that option. So I I may have to go that route, actually. I'll just be world records. There you go. I'll keep posting my, my world records on those forums. You'll be seeing those popping up soon. Oh, I can't wait to see them. Mm-hmm. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to break them Saturday. Then I have to mail them, and they have to be reviewed for authenticity. You actually have to film it from start to beginning. You actually have to film yourself putting the game in and pressing the power button to make sure you didn't use like a mod or something. And then you have to film the whole thing. And then some poor guy has to actually watch this entire boring video. And then once it's... Uh, There's a job for you. Yeah, I mean, I guess there could be worse jobs. I mean, any job that's pants optional can't be too bad. That's right. So, I don't know. Maybe I'll apply to that job. Oh, I actually, I had, like, nothing to do at work for, like, the last two and a half days. So, I finally get bored enough where I'm, like, asking for something to do. And the guy who normally gives me stuff, he's like, oh, I don't really have anything. So, I went up to, like, one of the head bosses and... I was like, you know, I might, you know, might have some downtime. Uh, not sure yet, you know, not positive, but if I have some downtime and you have something to do, you might want to throw it my way, you know. And he's like, why don't you come in here and shut the door? And I'm like, I am fucked. I've been on the internet for like the last 48 hours. <laughs> I haven't done anything. So I'm waiting for the pink slip. I'm like, I am finished. And he's like, what is your goal here? And... So I started spewing off some shit like, you know, I love the company and I would like to be a part of the team and, you know, all the stuff you're supposed to say. I want to take you down from the inside. (laughs) Yeah. And he's like, that's what I thought. You know, I've been, uh, I've been noticing your work and, uh, you know, I got to say, you you know, you know your stuff and you know what you're Mm. doing. And I'm like trying not to laugh. I'm like, really? You don't say. And he's like, yeah. He's like, if you want a job, I'm going to push for it. So, um, you know. Maybe in the next week or two, I'm actually going to get hired on to this company, which is mm. uh, it's, uh, it's not getting fired, so that's good. He must have you confused with someone else. Maybe, but, you know, whatever gets me that full health insurance. They have like like, that, the Seinfeld episode where the Peterman was talking to Elaine thinking she was someone else. Exactly. <laughs> they, have the, they have the sweetest health plan, though, so mm-hmm. um, it's, it's like full coverage, so I can finally get my 
Gimpy destroyed ankle checked out. There you go. Yeah, not opposed to that. So that was my little scare work. Um, but it looks like um, it's game on as far as the internet goes because uh, apparently I'm awesome and I do great work. Never go ask somebody for work. What you got to do is say, if anybody asks you if you need something to do, say, well, I'm, I, I got a thing I'm working on now, but maybe at the end of the day I might have some time if you need help. It's always what I say. I always use the I just finished. Like, the, like it was uncanny. Like, a minute ago, I just finished. So, yeah, uh, you know, you give me work because I, I finished this second. You know, even if oh. I've been done for, like, four days. <laughs> I'll always say, like, well, I'm working on a project now that I'm almost finished with. So, hopefully, by the middle of the day, I'll be done. And if you need something else. And then, by then, they find someone else to do it. <laughs> nice. It, it's amazing. Like, I, I guess half the people who work are like brain dead or something like they'll give me a job i'll finish it in about seven and a half minutes i'll sit there for like four and a half hours and then i'll go over and i'll be like oh i'm finished and every single time they're like oh you're done already i'm like yeah he's like oh i thought that was gonna take you three more days i'm like (laughs) fuck i gotta milk this for like another day and a half and still look like a stud one of my old jobs i i was a I he did stuff in an insurance company, and this guy, this old guy, came out with this huge list. It was like 20 pages. And he goes, I need you to make this into a spreadsheet for me. And I was like, okay. And he goes, I need it. Next. Uh, it was like the like 10th of the month, and he's like, I need it by the 1st of the month. I said, okay. I finished it that afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I got to the point where I did it like four times just because I needed to look busy. So I just kept retyping the same thing. Nice. So then what, you handed in like the 25th and he thought you were awesome? So even then he was like, you have that done? I was like, just about to finish it. He's like, great. He's like, awesome. He loved me. He was a big shot too. He was just, you know, he'd give me all these stupid things. He'd, like he'd go on vacation. He'd leave me his key. He'd be like, I need you to go to my house three times. You know, check the mail, take the garbage out. I'm like, okay. He's like, do I need to tell anyone? He's like, no, just go. I'm like, okay, fine. Like eat all the food in his fridge and then leave. Hmm. I I guess the the well you know what they actually did that I had a temp job for like a year and they I, I took like a a couple days off and they hired somebody else to do my job and they gave her like a sheet of numbers and they said just put this into an Excel sheet which is really just typing numbers into each little box they said they came back three hours later and there was like three random numbers and three random boxes on the spreadsheet. <laughs> And the girl had no clue what the fuck to do. And uh, so I'm like, well, if this is the people that, like, they've been getting, no wonder they think I'm friggin' awesome. They're like, you know, let this kid read comics. He'll get tired after a while and actually do the work. And yep. That's the way it goes. So, you know, thank you, everyone, for being retarded because... Yes, you know, ineptness is great. Mm-hmm. The stupider you are, the more I could get away with. Mm-hmm. So keep it going. They said, actually, they said when she first came in, she couldn't even figure out how to turn the computer or the monitor on. <laughs> they must have been like, fuck, we are fucked. <laughs> it's getting done today. So, that's that. Uh, what else we got going on? We have um, uh, a couple guests lined up again. Uh, I know uh, two weeks ago I said we we're going to have like a month of new people. Um New chair uh, was actually the first of that round, uh, so we got empty empty chair as the new guest for two weeks. Mm-hmm. Uh, next week, Randy will be back. All right. Yeah, she was a pretty good guest host, and we will also have a new guest along with Randy. So we're gonna have four people in here. It's oh, great! Be- More people to talk over each other. Exactly. It's gonna be a cacophony, a stupid mess, and uh, <laughs> we'll see how that goes. Uh, and then. The two weeks after that will most likely be the return of Alex and the return of Billy. So, uh, and then after that, who knows? After that, it's wide open. We seem to be getting pretty good feedback on Alex, though. Yes, I think Alex is our most popular guest. Yeah, actually, uh, you know, on the forums, he's uh, the most, uh, most talked about topic out of everything, so. Yes. Uh, people are Alex fans. Quite yeah. popular. 
he brings good energy to the show. He's, huh? uh, he comes prepared. He brings his little list of notes. He's got stuff to talk about. He's How did he actually, make out with a little date last week? Didn't he have a date or something? He had like two or three dates last week, so we're going to have to ask him about that. What a pimp. I know. Seriously. You can't. Like, he can't leave the apartment without getting a number. It's ridiculous. Mm-hmm. I go out with him. Girls just walk up to him and say, you should call me. So that's the way Alex rolls. But life is rough for him, man. Mm. I remember those days. Oh, yeah. That was that, that day. <laughs> <laughs> I had like a week and a half of that. I, this like random week and a half when I was like 25. I couldn't go anywhere without like just like tripping over myself with just like opportunity and then it died it went, went right down the toilet and i didn't take advantage of any of it i think i had a week like that too but i've never had like you know a five-year span like that like some guests have. it started with the that when i started the when i had that half beard that uh-huh. night and then for like the week after that like it just like took off because i wasn't working and it was summertime and i was skinny and I was just like, what up? I was hanging out at the beach. I was hanging out at bars every night. I was like, yeah, I'm a pimp. And then I, like a week later, I was like, I'm a putz. I haven't done a damn thing. <laughs> I remember I went to a bar alone, which I almost never do. And I'm sitting at the bar, and this monster comes up to me. And she's like, she taps me on the shoulder. She's like, it's my birthday. I'm like, oh, happy birthday. I just keep drinking. She's like, mm-hmm. I want to get, I want to get laid for my birthday. And I, I turn around, I look at her, and I'm like, good luck with that. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Well, what else was I supposed to do? That was that was beyond taking one for the team. That was, that was not an option. There was no team to take one for. <laughs> That's so, great. Yeah. But um, I, I don't have the... Uh, I don't know the style, the look, the uh, the lack of a uh, gut to uh, to keep that going. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe if I didn't drink four beers every podcast, it would help. But uh, yeah, whatever. I got things to do. I can't be sitting there lifting weights and doing sit ups. Yeah. I'm not. That. I'm not like fat. I just I don't have that uh, chiseled lumberjack body that uh, some people like. It's uh, you know what the problem is. I'll tell you what the problem is. And I think we've had this. I think I've had this discussion with you before a long time ago. There, there's a point when you, when you're a guy, and you're fat. There gets mm-hmm. to a point where it's accepted fat. Yes, like uh, the the Hurley from Lost. Yeah, like bouncer fat and like fat guy fat. But when and then there's like regular. And like, and then there's us. <laughs> we're like in the middle. We're not like regular. We're not cool fat. So we're just sort of like, uh, look, guys. I think you need to either eat more or go to the gym. One of the right, two. Right, right, right. You know? Yeah, it's like you get so fat, it's awesome again. Or, mm-hmm. or we're just lazy. Yeah. Yeah. No, I totally agree. Totally yeah. agree. We're we're just like that that ten pounds extra that makes people turn their heads and look. For I something. either I either have to gain 20 or lose 20 you know it's one of those yeah and i don't want to do either no i don't either i mean i'm not putting in an effort to be uh chubby or be skinny like i'm just like kind of like going with the flow mm-hmm. uh, uh and you know i'm a busy guy i don't got time to like lift things right. i'll lift things if i have to i'm not gonna like pay money to go lift things i lift my gut so i can see my dick that's what all i do <laughs> I, I lift mine so I can put on my belt. <laughs> Sometimes I'll lift mine if I want to see the uh, the weight on the scale. <laughs> but I don't uh, I don't like the weight on the scale, so I stop doing that. I lift mine when I can't find my cat. Oh, there he is. <laughs> I, I found out if uh, if you don't like your weight on the scale, you just get a a piece of duct tape and you put it over the numbers. There you go. Yeah. Problem I don't have solved. a scale. How about that? There you go. Or you can um you can unadjust it so it's like you know, way 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 off, and then you just set it for what you want to be. You could be like those fat people that are like 
Yeah, I weigh 320 here, but if I was on the moon, I would only weigh 160. Mm-hmm. That's like, what, what I do. I, if I, I weighed 160 from... here and I was on the moon, I'd weigh like 35 pounds. So fuck you, fat ass. I set my scale for moon weight. I <laughs> like it. <laughs> uh, yeah, so the... <laughs> We're slobs. <laughs> <laughs> what I'm are you damn gonna proud do? of it. What are you going to do? I mean, the people who, like, have all those muscles, they don't do anything else. I, uh... They have no personality, no sense of humor. Mm-mm. They have nothing to talk about except how many reps they do. You know what the... Oh, shit, I'm going to get... Did I just get fuzzy? No. Oh. I probably will, because I clicked the wrong thing on my computer. Okay. Shit, well, I forgot what I was going to say now. Oh, well. That was a great story. Yeah, sorry. You just got uh, louder and a little more clear. Oh, because I woke up, up. You just pushed the uh, the correct button, I guess. I pushed the J- bride on sound half asleep button. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot to push that on my computer last week. <laughs> I don't think I said anything for like 15 minutes last week. It's quite sad. I don't remember. You know what? It's it's hard, folks. So you you can't be on every week. It's uh, mm-hmm. it's a special skill that we have, and once in a while, the skill just isn't there. Mm-hmm. We are fucking on this week, though. This is this one's going to go down as uh, something. I don't know what it's going to go down though gonna go down it's episode 18 it sure is fucking <laughs> a it is <laughs> episode motherfucking 18 we um i'm not making any promises about friday actually mm. there might be an episode 19 early there might not uh we will post on the forums tomorrow though if there is yes uh so bring up sanity show.com slash forum uh, where we may or may not announce uh, our first live video drunken podcast. And oh, it's, it's video? It's going to be video, and it's going to be epic. Oh. <laughs> then it's not going to happen. <laughs> Why not, dude? Because <laughs> my webcam's all fucked up. I thought that was, like, the deal. Yeah, I thought the deal was just... That wasn't the deal I shook on. Oh, I thought you were clear on that. Oh, I didn't know that. Huh. All right, well, I guess I'll have to get really drunk then if that's the way it's going to be. Well, obviously, we're not going to do it unless we're, like, slurring and spitting on the mics and stuff. I mean, <laughs> the whole point of this is to embarrass ourselves to the point where we don't want to show our face again. Oh, all right. All right, so we're back. It might happen again. <laughs> Could happen. <laughs> I talked you into it. Yeah. Uh, So we are just about out of time this week. That was yes. a hour. Yeah, it was. Oh, it's been on, oh, yeah, it has been an hour. It has. Damn. Yeah. Uh, so thank you for listening. Uh, thank you, everyone who voted. Thank you, uh, everyone who is new and downloaded the episode. <clears throat> uh, the show will continue to get better. As you know, we're going to get a format down eventually, and we'll, we'll get our groove going. Uh, it's still a baby podcast. The format is random. It's whatever's on our mind. Sometimes we're serious. Sometimes we're funny. Sometimes we're boring. You just have to deal with it and live through it. Yeah, it's different each time. Um, it's. I feel like everyone goes over the news stories. So, uh, you know, we'll talk about current events sometimes, you know, like we do with Iron Man and stuff. I just, I feel like doing an entire show of that, like everyone does it. We we want to bring something new to the table, and I, I you know we have enough interesting stuff that happens that I feel we can bring bring that stuff up instead. You know, yeah. Uh, we also have a section if there's a story that somebody found that they want us to talk about. We have a section on the forums for that. You know, we're not opposed to that. Um, I just don't want to do the same exact show that like 19 other comedy podcasts are doing. And we cover a wide range of topics, right? So yeah. I know a little about a lot, so I can't do a whole lot of topics. But and I know a lot about stuff people don't care about. So. Eventually, we're gonna have a, a well, it probably won't even be a whole political show. It'll be like five minute political, uh, so we can uh, 
discuss the election coming up and all that stuff, but that's probably not for a ways off. Right. I want to do our uh, our religion episode too. Now that now that Obama though has clinched the presumptive quote unquote nomination, my uh, my wager is still on the table. There's no negotiation. I know there was a person on the board who tried to negotiate with me. The the bet what was I don't even remember what the bet is. Was a hundred dollars or Bry doesn't negotiate with terrorists. <laughs> I don't negotiate with anybody. <laughs> the bet was I think it was fifty dollars or it was either hundred or hundred. Whatever like, you want to do is that McCain will beat Obama, and he'll beat him pretty handily, I think. And, I, and that's not what I want, but I just think that's what's going to happen for a variety of reasons. Uh, I am looking for it on the forums. We actually yeah. got a couple. Uh, we got a couple of posts now, so it's actually getting harder to weed through this shit. Uh, While you're looking for that, I would just like to say uh, a quick, if I could be serious for one second. Uh, serial uh, carpens. Uh, serial carpens, yes. Today, we're recording this on June 4th, and in about seven hours from now, it'll be the it'll be June 5th, which is the 40th anniversary of when Bobby Kennedy got assassinated, which is a major turning point. So anybody who listens to this, just give a couple seconds and think about how different the world would have been if he didn't get killed. Thank you. Good night. Did you find what you're looking for? <laughs> Uh, $50 that McCain will make it through the first six months of his... Oh, no, that was not my bet. That was a negotiated bet. That's that not going to happen. Uh, uh, 100... I forgot if it was a, it was 100 on Obama. I mean, Oh, here McCain we go. Obama. Here it is. Uh, $100 McCain beats Obama. $50 McCain doesn't live four years. That's right. Nobody wants to take those bets. Get a hold of me on the podcast. And the person who tried to negotiate those bets, you have forfeited your chance to have those bets. So I'm looking for somebody new. And it's uh, on the forums. Uh, if you go to episode 14, Barf Bucket, that's where the wheeling and dealing is going on there. That's right. If you want to know why I feel so strongly about that, you can ask me on the forums and I will uh, get into a quick synopsis and then i'll save the rest for when we do the political talk on the air now if uh obama has hillary as her vice president his vice president uh are you still taking that bet um i won't be as confident but i would i'll still take it only because i said a while ago if it was obama mccain i would i would make the bet i wouldn't be as confident if, if hillary clinton's in there um but I just I, after I, all that shit she talked, she better pray that he's nice enough to do that. I I don't think he will. Although I can't think of anybody better that he could pick. I think but he I, should just because I think his chances are a lot better if he does. Uh, just because like you got everyone who's going to vote for both. Both yeah. of them. you know you're going to eliminate all the Hillary people if you don't have her as VP. So. Exactly. Oh. I don't it know. all depends. It also all depends on who McCain picks as his. But I don't think there's nobody really exciting that people are going to jump up and say, "Oh, I'm going to vote for McCain because he picked." Unless it's Plus, Howard Dean, I'm not voting for him. He should pick Hillary Clinton. Then he'll win. What if Obama picks Howard Dean? No, uh, Howard Dean can't run because he's uh, the head of the Democratic National Committee or God whatever. Damn it! That's why he's not running for president. That's why he signed up. He he, I forgot if he ran for that or if he was just elected that or whatever. But one of the things was that he couldn't run in two thousand eight. Ah, fuck. All I'm right. really surprised. I thought at the last minute Al Gore was gonna sneak in and fuck everybody up and win. But uh, let's not even open that can of worms. I'm still bitter about that. You see recount? Did I tell you that I, I didn't, you and I figured I figure it's gonna piss me off beyond belief. It's pretty frustrating, but it's it's a good movie and it's well done. I'll watch it eventually. Yeah. All right, so that's we are out of time. That was our serious portion of the show. Sorry for making you have to sit through 57 minutes of crap to get to the important stuff, but that's okay. We always end the show and then talk for another 10 minutes because we just yes. don't want to let go of you people. You mean so right. much to us. And uh, that's it. So uh, bring it to our website. Show. Everything's there. Right on the front page, there's an ad. If you watch it from beginning to end, 
then we get money for new equipment. So please do that. Uh, everything's there. Subscribe through iTunes. Uh, vote through Podcast Alley. Everything's on that front page. The contact info, the forums, it's all there. So brinkofsanityshow.com. I'm glad I made that website. Uh, not that anybody goes to it, but it saves me time in, you know, saying... Having to say 10,000 different things. Yeah, exactly. Now, I don't need to do the Skype name, the email address. It's all it's all on the front page. So now I just go to bringupsanitytshow.com. Done. So that's it. Uh, we will be back next week with Randy and special new mystery guest. So there'll be four of us. And it'll... Yay, empty chair. Shit. Oh, wait. Uh, thank you, empty chair. Uh, it was good having you again. Way uh, to contribute. Maybe in a couple of weeks we'll have you back. Uh, you know, it's been great. And uh, <laughs> we will see you all next Wednesday. Adios.